or you up for another brewing experiment, well, I am as always. Today I'm going to try a method of brewing that I've been thinking about a lot in all of the steps. We're going to brew super fast. I'm going to call this the shake and brew method. Let's just get started. I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and homebrewing. So if you want to learn with me how to come better at beer and brewing, or you like people doing stupid stuff on the internet, why don't you consider becoming a subscriber and of course follow me also on Instagram. Yeah, and uh, like the video and all of that. And if you want to help out the channel, I have Patreon, channel membership, or just buy me a beer, all links down below. Let's get brewing! I try to think out a plan and I did a lot of mise en place here today to speed things up. We have a 10 liter keg so we're gonna brew 9 liters of beer so we are fermenting under pressure so it should be fine. We will also use a floating dip tube. I did try this out. This will leave uh, about half a liter behind so that should be good because we're gonna leave all of the hops in there and there will be a yeast cake in the bottom so I think that would be great and we will do our beer from the top and we can take gravity samples if you want to yeah I really thought this one out so to speed things up I'm gonna use DME so it's gonna be an extract beer because mashing takes a lot of time and uh, of course you could do quick mashing but we can leave that for another video comment down below if you want need to try out some mashing time experiments. I only have a kilo so I'm uh, gonna use some honey also to bump up the ABV and maybe dry up the beer a little bit also. To speed up the fermentation we're gonna use quark. We're gonna ferment this hot but not super hot because I do want the, the beer to be carbonated straight away. I will link down below to this video the ultimate carbonation calculator which you find on my web page. You also find it on Brew Goat's webpage also, so you can dial in the pressures. So I would go like 30 degrees, 2.4 bars maybe. I ain't gonna go in a hotter. We could do, but I probably won't. I will be using bottled water today, and just because I like to boil my water and uh, I didn't prepare this, I want this to go super fast. I really like hard water with a lot of calcium, and uh, a lot of iron, so, so uh, I really want to, to boil it. So today I put on my spending pants, the unicorn t-shirt and spend a lot of money on bottled water. Not a lot! Let's just get started. Dry malt extract is super sticky, so I'm gonna try to get this in here before adding any water. Wish me luck. I don't want this on my hands. This is good content. This is not working as planned. There probably be some sort of condensation down here. Okay, this is working. It's not a super small opening. The, the diameter of the opening of the mini cake is 3.2 centimeter or 32 millimeters. Should we try it like this instead? Nope, we'll do it the slow, slow and safe method. Is this good content? Now my fingers are all sticky. I'm so sticky! That was all of it. Note to self, buy a bigger funnel. <laughs> my arms have broken. This is just like if I would have been like master for hours. Sorry. My hands are sticky. Yes, I feel sorry for myself. My hands are sticky. There's dry malt extract everywhere. Buy a bigger funnel. Dry malt extract is super sticky. So yes do need a bigger funnel. So the next step, adding the honey. If I would have more DME, I would probably use it, but let's go with honey. And the recipe for this is ordered up in the big Dr. Hans recipe book for my patrons to dig into, but we are all running it through right now if you want to brew along. This is 500 grams of honey, more or less the cheapest I could find. Now this is the way to go. But if we would just have a bigger, ooh, if we just would have a bigger funnel, it should have been much better with the DME also. Next step, hops. So I calculated this 
recipe in my brain also used blue father a little of course why didn't i use that funnel because it was wet so i'm gonna add 20 grams of simco cryo hops they have an alpha acid at 23.8 percent so 20 grams of hops going in i put the kettle on with one and a half liters of not carbonated water hopefully all calculations will go fine with with bitterness with temperature with OG this is a shake to glass video so we will find out in the end if it is gonna be beer I just thought we wouldn't measure anything but we could measure the OG and FG so maybe we'll do that I will add some these nutrient quarter of a teaspoon the kettle has its boiling temperature the DME is in the yeast nutrient is in the honey is in 20 grams of cryo hops is in I'm gonna add one and a half liters of water Woohoo! and uh, let's just start the timer for five minutes so the idea is now I'm gonna shake this for five minutes and that's gonna give us bitterness from the hops because they have quite a high alpha acid only five minutes hot and also hopefully we will dissolve the uh, DME four minutes left this is a workout shake and brew shake shake and brew shake and brew shake shake and brew which channel is that that is a brewing channel please comment down below shake and brew shake shake and brew shake and brew shake shake and brew is someone else doing this already this should work i think and the uh, rest of the bottles are just uh, am i screaming the rest of the bottles is just uh, room temperature also because we are going to use quite we want it hot i'm hoping we will end at just over 30 degrees celsius something like that that is the the plan three minutes left this is good content two and a half minutes left come on shake it doctor shake those hips now that's good content so the five minutes is because i want the hopes to sit here hot so we get some bitterness now this is starting to hurt my other arm as well two more minutes maybe i don't need to shake it anymore why not one and a half minute shake it shake it like that shake it like the doctor yeah shake it like the doctor shake it like the doctor shake it like the doctor Ooh. now this must be good content next time i want to shake it five minutes i will shake it one minute and just let it sit hot because the dme should have dissolved by now Whew. this was of course sanitizing the keg the, the keg was already sanitized but nothing wrong with sitting hot 30 more seconds starting to get tired why am i doing these crazy experiments so you guys don't have to so please hit the like button and we have five four three two one second and we're done ouch my arm is killing me yeah smells like hops to me so i will add now the first bottle to take the temperature down a bit to stop like the the bitterness process that should have dropped the temperature quite a, a bit so i also thought we could try the aroma sign aroma sign never tried it I'm gonna use half gram of that i just like to put a piece of tin foil on the the scale half a gram somewhere around that maybe and uh, it's said to add it like it was a span with the temperature which i don't remember now up to like 65 c or something like that so this should be under 65 c you could have you could of course check the the temperature 
on the surface here. Quick tip, if it doesn't read so good on like stainless, you could put a you could put some like tape on it and take a reading from that. It's still hot, but it's not super hot. Like 40 degrees. We'll add it. Do you guys want to see a split batch with aroma sign? Let me know. So now we'll add some more hops. So let's let's just dry hop straight away. This is 30 grams of uh, also cryo Simcoe hops. Same, same alpha acid, 23.8. Should we do this so you can actually see the hops? Okay, dry hopping done. Now we should just add the rest of the, the water. Do you think this will be good? Why not? So six of these bottles, five cold, one hot. Cold, room temp. But if you're using uh, like a large yeast or maybe an A yeast and they don't want to go as hot, you could of course shield the, the water. That would take the, the temperature down. It'll be interesting to see what temperature we're getting. Because the DME, of course, was room temp and the honey was room temp and uh, all of the hops. It's actually foaming now straight to the, to the top. I haven't actually measured this if it holds 10 liter. I'm so stupid sometimes. Should be given another shake. But there is a lot of water here now. I'm starting to feel the panic coming. It's heavy. It's heavy. I'm starting to get a little bit worried that we have too much beer in here. What? It's not beer just yet. It's actually beer the, f the moment you add yeast to it. It's, it's beer. But of course, it's a very sweet beer at that stage and alcoholic free. Okay, so I am a bit worried that we do have too much liquid in here. Because it's barely, it's barely shakes. So maybe this ain't 10 liters after all. We need to pour some out to make some headspace in here. Note to self, measure, because this is barely moving. I'm thinking it's more or less up to here. This is gonna be a mess. Now we have some sort of headspace in there. Let's just add the Add the yeast. This is 11 grams of uh, Voskvajk. I haven't taken a temperature reading just yet, but according to this, it's like almost spot on 28. Let's see if we can go inside the liquid. That says 20. Eight, almost. So calculation seems to be working. The yeast goes in. Yes, all of it. Floating dip tube. This is a cask witch. I do have a video on the on the cask witch, and also a really stupid experiment that actually worked out. I will link to both the cask witch video and the post on a bucket and where I used that thing, yes, for a beer with a lot of uh, raspberries in it. We will use the, the spandit, just gonna close it all the way and now pressurize this, but uh, if you don't want to pressurize your vessel and instead want to dial in your spandage, you can just pressurize the, uh, another PET bottle with a car carbonation cap and use it that way. The only reason I'm actually pressurizing this is to dial in the spandage. So this goes on the gas side. Be extremely careful with that. 
So I will just open this up and this only goes, the meter only goes to like two bars or 30 psi. But if we look at the, look at the meter on, on the spandit, you can see that looks to be like a linear, linear, -nair. yes, linear, -nair. linear, -nair. linear -nair thing. So you could just eyeball it. That's the way I've been doing it. So all dialed in. Nice. And you thought we were done now? No, we're gonna heat control. For, we're gonna heat control it. Should we take a gravity reading also? We're gonna let this chill down to room temp. We will control the temperature. Are we using a heat mat? Thinking like down here. So the heat mat is on there and I will control this with an STC 1000. This is set to 28. Why not? Let's start at 28 as it is. And then we can bump up the temperature to 30 at the end. As I usually do, I like to bump up the temperature in the end. Was I out from the light there a bit? Here I am. Just stick this on here. Should insulate it with something. That's my favorite. And why is my tape sticking so well to the fermenter? Because I'm not buying the cheapest tape there is. So simple. Maybe that's too high. Let's move it down here. That should be a good spot. I want to insulate that just a bit. I'm getting caught here. This is gonna be an editing nightmare. Yes, just gonna make a small patch here out of a bubble wrap. That should work. Or should we make it look fancy also with some... Uh, put it in this. Now it's fancy. Okay, aluminum foil and bubble wrap. Almost too good. And this is reading 28 already. And it goes up slightly. I'm actually gonna set it to the temperature that this will that this is reading. It says 28.3 now. We'll have to wait and see how far we'll push it. So we will just control this with. I have a video on this, of course. Uh, just heat control system, because we're using the ambient temperature as the the cooling, and this only works if you're fermenting at much hotter temperature, at least three degrees Celsius, but better, this way is better, because we have like 20 C in here, and this would ferment it over 28 degrees. Set this to like 29 now, because it's still raising up. It's still increasing. Yeah, I know all the fancy words. So I set this to 29 instead. 28.8. The sample has cooled down and it's at 1050. Nice. Now I'm thinking, why don't we just Scooby Doo ourselves until fermentation has kicked in? Four hours later, the thermometer is going crazy. We are back up to pressure again. Nice. Roundish 29, 18 hours of the pitch and uh, fermentation is starting to slow down already. So let's, let's bump it up. So I bumped it up to 31 because this was all about fast brewing. We could have gone hotter, but I still want some carbonation in the beer. And when I cold crash, I just take off the uh, Spand it and chill it. I'm gonna put this into a fridge. The spanning valve has done its thing, so you don't need it anymore. The fermentation is over. You, you don't have any spanning valve on your kegs when you're cold crushing them or chilling them. So I just remove the, the spandit and you don't change any pressure during uh, cold crashing or conditioning. If you have the 
right amount of CO2 in your bill already and th that's why we use the calculator. If not, you should of course push some pressure on here when conditioning to get the amount of carbonation you want in your beer. So this goes into the fridge. One week later, almost to the hour, okay? So I'm, I'm really stoked about this. Yes, I have tried it. This has been cold crashing for three days now. So fermentation, of course, went really fast. So we're doing it uh, at really high temperature. Before we get into the tasting, what beer styles do you want me to try out this way? If this turns out, okay. Uh, I'm thinking wheat beer, New England IPAs. Maybe we shouldn't do like malt forward specialty beers if we're doing them extract this way. But if we're doing like cheese forward beers, we're doing uh, hop forward beers, why not? We could try it. So let me know down in the comments which brews you want me to try out this way. Uh, we could use 10 liters, have a five liters, have a, or what is it, like three liters. Of course, you could do like a full corner cake. Should we do full cake mentor? Maybe not. The recipe for this, I, I already run by it during brew day, but the recipe, is of course up in the big Dr. Hans recipe book for my patrons to dig into called something like one pot shake and brew was quite look for it both in beer xml and in pdf form yes so i had to make actually a new form because i never i never really dig into uh, extract i went more or less went to all grain start so I made a special folder called extract there. Okay, pours beautifully. And now, think about this. We made all of it in this. We brewed it, fermented it, and now we're serving it. That's freaking awesome. Do I have a light? It's not as dark as you see it as usual. Okay, there you have the color. It's a good looking beer. Nice, tight little white head on it. You get a lot of esters from that Voskvike. I do get some of, of the Simcoe, but it's mostly about the, the esters, I think. Maybe I should have dried hop it. I did, but I did it at start, so maybe I should have done it at the end of uh, fermentation. But I still get the Simcoe. But more about the esters. Cheers, let's dive in. It's actually very nice. I'm a little bit blown away, but let's get on with it. There's a lot of like character there from the from the yeast. This, this is quite dry. This fermented out to 1006. It didn't. 1006. And that's because of the honey. I wish I had had more. DME at home. I should have just brewed five liters. I didn't know why I had to go like 10 liters, but I wanted to use this cake for something. I haven't used it actually for anything. Beer is good. We're getting a lot of like almost like canned peach, mango, maybe orange, but it's more like a, a like, like a softer fruit, like a stone fruity vibe, like peaches, mango, and I think we're mostly getting that from, from uh, the, the quike. So getting that um, estery fermentation, uh, quikey, quike is not the best word. I have tried out quite some different varieties of quikes. This actually reminds me of, of this beer, like the extreme beer that was also fermented with quike, but I can't remember now which quike strain it was. If it was the was or not. No pun intended. So really like fruity, fruity beer, not to swear in the church and yeah, I know I'm going to get some hate for this, but I'm not really a Quike fan. The Lutra was really nice and I haven't tried all of them, of course. I turn around beers extremely fast with normal beer yeast when I'm fermenting under pressure. Of course, this went super fast, but I, I can turn around a, a beer in a week anyways. I might have had preferred this without it being like super estery like it is now. 
if I have would I bought this, I, I don't say they're bad because it's it's really good beer. But it's what it is. It is a Kvaik estuary beer. This was fermented under pressure, and this was fermented at about 35 psi for the main time. But it started off even higher because uh, yeah, fermentation was going like crazy. So I had to dial it back just a bit. I ended this at 30 C, so that doesn't give it the enough carbonation for my taste. So I had to put some CO2 on it when it was cold crashing it. Uh, but now it's, it's nicely carved up. It's helped the head there. So I haven't really found any flaws with th this extract brewing method. Um, if we try to brew the right beer style, so please comment down below, help me out what you guys think. Is, does it sound like a solid plan for like maybe not doing malt forward beers? Because let's stick with the like shake and brew in one pot system. And so uh, brew, ferment and serve from the same system. And uh, let me hear what, what styles you think would work. A lot of time and effort are put into bringing you these videos. So please consider supporting on Patreon, becoming a channel members, or just buy me a beer. All links down below, as usual. And don't forget to uh, subscribe if you aren't. It really helps out the channel and uh, ringing the bell and liking all of that. And as I said earlier, comment down below with your suggestions. Cheers guys and thank you so much for watching. Dork turns out. <sighs> Tastes like, it, it is actually really nice and uh, I was afraid uh, of the honey but it didn't get in the way. Thinking maybe we would, would get uh, like a cidery taste or I don't know. Cheers. See you in the next one. Now go and watch this video.